and a very warm welcome to you from Las Vegas in Nevada. We're in the USA for the first time for this 361 World Men's Curling Championship 2018. Amongst the famous attractions, the dancing fountain outside the Bellagio Hotel, there's the glam and the glitz of the Las Vegas Strip. So much to see and do in this part of the world. Millions come here every year to do just that. And then, of course, they head over to the Orleans Arena to watch world-class curling. It's session 11 now, 13 teams playing 12 round-robin games. And our featured matchup in this draw is China against Italy. China, three wins, three losses. And Italy, just the one win. So both in need of victories now as we approach the kind of midway mark of this round robin. I'm Alison Walker and with me for live commentary on the whole of this game is New Zealand Olympian and four times competitor at the world's Hans Fraunlob. The teams marching in then and great atmosphere inside the Orleans Arena. Here's the lineups. Xiao Jilin is the lead. Playing second for China, we have Zhu Jingdao. And third for Team China, Zhao Qiang. And there's to China skip, Zhao Dija. The lineup for Italy, Daniele Ferrazza playing lead. Andrea Pilzer is the second player. Joao Roturnas is the skip and he plays third. Playing fourth with the skip stones is Amos Mosana. Those are the lineups, and these are the standings. Look at that Sweden leading the way. An unblemished record so far. Canada, Norway, and Scotland on five and one. Teams on three and two and three and three. Italy, one and four, need to start winning. And China will want to progress up the table as well. So, very, very important game for both of these teams. So elsewhere in the arena, we have Switzerland against Korea. Our matchup, China against Italy. It's Sweden, Norway, and Germany take on Russia. We'll keep you updated with everything else that goes on inside the Orleans, but uh, our main game will be this one, as Italy and China shake hands and wish each other well. I haven't seen too much of China in this competition so far, but I know you have hands. What do you make of them? Well, they've been in a lot of really close games. They lost uh, a last rock uh, game to Norway earlier on today, but they've been really competitive. They've shown flashes of real brilliance. And if they can just close games out, uh, they could be a factor come playoff time. They're in the frame now at three and three, a very important game for them tonight, as it is for the Italians. The Italians coming in on one and four puts this one into the must win category for uh, Joel Rotornas and his Italian teammates. And they've also come very close in a couple of games as well, particularly last night in that one against Canada. That's a sore one for them, the way they lost it. Well, it certainly is. It was such a dramatic finish and, and a lot of amazing shooting in that game. And almost most honor just missing a last shot double takeout to, to win the game. But that's the kind of thing you need to do to close out. A lot of teams can get close and the great teams finish the job and close it out. And that's the step that this Italian team have yet to make. They are in there against everybody. They've got all the shots. And same with this Chinese team. Uh, they really rely on their sweepers. They're a very intense team. They're not afraid to go around guards. They're not afraid to draw. Should be very entertaining. And we've seen a lot of Chinese teams. No, no, this is not the one we're regularly used to seeing, but they were pretty good at the Pacifics in November, weren't they? Oh, very much so. This was the Zhao team that was competing at Pacifics. And you're right, we're accustomed to seeing Lu Ray and his uh, other Chinese men's team in international competitions. China will play the Red Stones tonight. Italy will play the Yellow Stones. But China is really looking to build depth in their program as the host of the next Winter Olympics. Italy will have last rock by virtue of having better last stone draws. And that means China will get us underway Xiao Jilin, just 23. It's been curling a long time. The Harbin Curling Club, that's the kind of hotbed of curling in China. Or the cold bed. Or cold bed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Mecca. Yeah, the Mecca, indeed. Mecca. Um, 
Putting a stone into the rings. Harbin, of course, a city world famous for its ice festival. They embrace winter in the northern part of China. And Daniele Ferrazza, lead player for Italy, 25 years old. Coming out of Trentino curling with this team for a long time, 11 years. Curling for 17. This Italian team played in Pyeongchang at the Winter Olympic Games. And they finished ninth. So they've had a busy year. Well, they certainly have. Uh, Italian curling has come quite a long way. They used to struggle even to qualify for world championships and they've elevated their game and they continue to work on it. They're investing in coaching and development. I think the team getting to the Winter Olympics has helped boost it back home as it has with all these teams. The Olympics is the catalyst and has been the catalyst for everyone wanting to be involved now in this great sport. That's absolutely right, Alison. And mentioned China, the host of the next Winter Olympics in Beijing. You can fully expect that there will be a massive effort in China, not only to raise the game in the elite level, but there's a real drive to boost winter sport participation full stop. And yeah. get normal people like me out curling. <laughs> I think you give us a run for our money, Alice. There's <laughs> Joel Returnas. Chance for Ferrazza to make a double takeout. Remove both Chinese stones. Those Chinese stones are in the ring, so they can be removed. Looking for the roll more than the double. Gets a piece of the back stone. Just gently nudges them out of the rings. It's a very dainty double, very nicely played by Ferrazza. First look at Zhao Jingtao, 25 years old. Big basketball fan. We have basketball inside the Orleans Arena at times as well. But it's all about curling this week. Just going for the hit. Clip the guard. Clip the Italian stone, pushing it to the edge of the 12 foot circle and leaves his own stone on the other side, the right hand side as we're looking at it. Good chance now for the Italians, though, to set up a potential deuce in the first in. Andrea Pilzer, second for. Italy, 12 years with this team. Nice shot. This, yeah, slight roll in, and well separated. After clipping the guard on his first, Xu Xintao needs to stick around with this one. He's going to roll and close it up a little bit. Pretty good shot. There was a play for you in this round robin. Six ends minimum. That's the 38 minute thinking time in that one 60 second timeout when they. Ask for their coach to come down, usually towards the end of the game when the, the big decisions have to be made. Second stone for Andrea Pilzer, who's a PhD student in computer science. Close hit. PhD. That's impressive. Fortunately, you get all kinds of people coming to curling with all sorts of skills. It's true. Whether it's science or arts or everyone's attracted to the sport in some way. Different jobs. A lot of these players aren't full time. They have to do other things. That's Zhao Qiang, third player for China. Please, please. 
This one's really curling. Clips and he's going to spill. Rolls out of the rings. So that's the potential to now under threat. He played in the men's in Edmonton in 2017. The world's. Almost most on her holding the target brush. This man's been curling forever. Joel Returnas, 34 years old. It does seem like Joel's been curling forever. He's still a young man. Skipped Italy at the Olympics in 2006. Tender age 22. You're seeing that one passed him by a little bit and this, this year in Pyeongchang. He was really able to appreciate it and enjoy it. That's a pretty nice stone. Yes. Uh, talk to Joel about that exact subject. And exactly right. He had a wonderful way of expressing it. He said qualifying for Pyeongchang just had a different taste because in Italy, of course, Italy were the host nation. They didn't have to qualify into the event. Italy had to earn their way into the field at Pyeongchang. And very satisfying for Joel. Does a lot to promote the game in his country as well. So, all round good guy. Absolutely. So, not too much going on. A lot of stones in play. The two point end still very much on, but Italy will need to continue to make nose hits. After Joe rolled out earlier in the end. Very nice. Stone's almost dead parallel. No chance whatsoever for a cross house double takeout. to the skip stone show DJ he's 34 leading the way for his team leading the men's in 2015 world men's when they were eighth in Halifax in Canada and also in 2013 in Victoria so plenty of experience good nose hit there from Shao de Shao. He has the hammer here in the first. It's Amos Masanar. 23 now. Played in a couple of world men's before. In 2015 and 2017. The best finish was ninth last year. Yeah, Amos is a real talent. He's a young man. Can throw the rock hard with accuracy. He has touch. Question for him is going to be: Can he mature as a um, contributor to strategy? He already is. Even though Joel calls the game, Mamas is very involved in, the, the, in vice, the decision yeah. making. But he has every chance to have a long and very fruitful future in this game. So he makes some amazing shots in the game we we had last night. Absolute crackers. Certainly did. Yeah. So Italy lying too. Shah de Shah. Trying to make most on his last one a little bit more difficult. Sits in the open though, so it will be an open hit for most on to try and score two. Tira all'interno esterno. 
One mistake in this end so far has really turned it in favor of Italy. So here goes Amos with his last one of this first end. Just quiet wait, board wait. Hits and rolls slightly to the outside of the 12 foot. Nicely done. And a good start for Italy in this game against China. China zero, Italy two after one. So second end of our featured game between China and Italy. Session 11 of the round robin. It's a long, long week for these teams, an extended round robin, 12 games. And sometimes you start well, sometimes you don't, and you build up to it. Some teams just keep steady all the way through. But you can start late and finish well, so a lot can still happen. That's his first stone in the rings. Exactly right, Allison. The playoff format with this expanded field now with six teams making the playoffs means that you don't want to leave your run too late, but if you can get yourself to a seven and five one loss record, you'd be thinking that you're in the hunt. Yep, psychologically, you don't want to leave yourself too much to do. Yeah, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you have to win six or seven in a row just to keep yourself in it. China with the corner guard, so Ferrazza. To guard the stone that he just threw into the rings. We're going to keep an eye on all the games for you. Of course, our feature game, China-Italy, but a very important game between Sweden and Norway tonight. Two teams near the top of the table. And there's a genuine reward for finishing first or second in the round robin, Allison. You go directly to the semifinal. Nice shot by Fratza. Yeah, that's quite an incentive to do well in these series of round robin games. Half the rock showing. Working oh, hard to get us by the center guard. This gives us a really good view of how the swing worked on that stone. Let's uh, 
have a look elsewhere and see what's happening. First of all, Germany against Russia in the first end. At the other end there, this is Alex Bowman. Facing two. And Germany, one win so far. Big one for Bauman. They need this win desperately tonight. Will curl enough. Just enough to hang around. <laughs> yep, he's okay. He's okay. The brooms are up. One for Germany. And on to Sweden against Norway. Two great rivals on the international stage playing each other. Although Nicolas Sedin is usually more used to playing another Norwegian team. But it's Norway. Stefan Moldred that he's facing here, going for one in this first end. Wallstead made a really nice corner freeze on his final shot to force Adin into this draw to try and score a single point. No, oh, very nice shot by Nick Adin. Yep, we'd be happy to get a good draw in early. And they take the lead there. Sweden won Norway nil after one. And we're 2-0 to Italy in our featured game. We're in the second end. Two Italian stones in the rings, two Chinese guards in front of the house. China with last rock here in the second, Andrea Pilzer. Making a very late break. The sweepers wanted to sweep it, but they couldn't because of line. It's covering the hole nicely. Nice shot. And there is the China coach, Marcel Rock, from Canada, from Alberta. And he won a few things in his time as well. <laughs> he certainly has earlier today. So another Alberta curler, Kevin Martin, inducted into the World Curling Hall of Fame. And Marcel Rock member of the Randy Furby team, three-time world champion, so a lot of class. And he certainly made a difference to the Chinese teams that have appeared on the world stage. China runs in the guard stone, picks off one of the Italian rocks, but it rolls out themselves, Xu Xintao. Opens it up. There's Soren Grant, working for Team Italy as coach now. Helped out quite a few teams on the international stage from Sweden. And the rest of the Italy bench there. Marco Mariani on the right hand side, teammate of Joel Rotornes is at the 2006 Winter Olympics. And the alternate in the middle there was Fabio Ribotta. Here is Joel Rotornes. Ratz and Pilz are on the brush, is trying to get it by that center guard. They just squeak it by. Very nice brush. Just biting the front eight foot. That was close, that one. It was. Unfortunately for the Italians, it does set up a potential double takeout here for China. Three more feet of weight, and that was golden. Let's see how much it buried behind the guard, even just in that short two or three foot distance. Yeah, Joel Rutuna shaking his head a bit there. He knows he's left the double takeout attempt here for Shao Kang. Doesn't quite make the double, pushes the Italian stone to the left. Chinese stone is shot, but it's open. Needed to catch the front stone a little thinner to make the double take out. Caught it a little thick. Good luck at it from the delivery end. Chinese stone wide open. 
Even a chance for a cheeky inside roll behind the guards. On this one immediately, Pilzer on the inside sweep trying to hold the line. Yeah, you can see it swinging. Oh, again, great brushing. No roll though. Italy line two. Xiao Xia lining up the outside stone. Not fully available for Xiao Qiang, but he'll just play quiet weight. Looking for a roll on this? I think so. They're really playing it quietly to try and get on the inside if they can. It's just not going to make that curl, though. Just don't have to push the um, Italian stone through the rings. Joe has the hammer here on end number two, trailing by two. That one cleared the guard by a fair margin. So, almost most center can play similar kind of weight. There is a chance for an inside roll. He will have learned a little bit from that previous stone. That's true. That's a very good point, Allison. You can learn a lot by watching every stone, not just your own. Sweeper's not laying a brush to it. Again, well by the guard, right on the nose. Just like a little track down there on that outturn side. Italy line two. Shao Tejia wants to draw around that Italian stone in the front 12 foot. This doesn't surprise me. This team really likes the draw. Give them the choice between draw and hit when they've got the hammer. That's They'll back themselves. Yeah, that's quite unusual in the top level game to prefer your draw <laughs> to prefer the draw to the hit. Well, this Chinese friend into Shao Ju. And really hammer it on the brushes. And when you've got confidence Whoa. in your sweepers and confidence in your own delivery, you can really work the stone on the draw. You, well, you have more control over it, don't you? You can make it your own. Oh, how's this looking, though? Well, they hit it early with the brushes, and it's tracking straight, and it's going to go deep. How deep? Deja looking on. It's going to go all the way to the back of the 12 foot. I would say Italy's lying one. I think the stone at the back is second shot. Players just having a quick look. One, they all count, you know. It's not about being on the bottom necessarily. Yeah. 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 wants to play the bump and throw out his own stone. I'm not sure that that's the right play because stone in the front 12, it's already shot, and see Mosan are saying, yeah, let's just draw around. I think that's a better call. If you bump the front stone, you bring that back stone into play. I'm sure that's what he's just said. And again, as you pointed out, I also had a chance to learn a little bit from the previous stone of Xiao Nezha. Hit it early with the brushes, it tracked a little bit. Yeah. 
Remarked, remarkably uh, fluid delivery from Mossenar for someone that's a very, very tall player. Absolutely. Great flexibility. This one's starting to make a move. Got to get it by. Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> oh, he sneaked past that one, didn't it? And right <laughs> into the button. Oh. Super shot from Mossana. Molto bene. You wouldn't know, though. Oh, there was a bit of a smile there, nearly. Great shot. That certainly asks the question, doesn't it, of China? Yes, it does. The nose double is there, but it would be a nose double to maybe score one and a risk of a jam on the back, and it could go horribly wrong, and it could drop two. It's that risk and reward thing again, isn't it? I am a little surprised with this play, Allison. In this situation, you do run the risk. Like I said, things could go really bad. You could get, drop a steal of two. No real chance to score, but it's a situation where you might be happy enough to concede one. The logic here. If I'm going to concede one, I'm just going to hit the stone on the front and take my chances on the double. Here he goes then. Deja. Last on the second end. No guarantees of anything. Yep, stuffs it. It is a steal of one for sure, and they will take a look at the second just to make sure it's one and not two. That was the danger. Then he felt he should go for it. Steal of one. It is just one. It means they do retain the hammer, but after two ends, China zero, Italy three. Here's the numbers so far in our featured game. We're watching live coverage from the 361 World Men's Curling Championship 2018. Great to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying the action. Live commentary on this one between China and Italy from me, Alison Walker, and Hans Fraunlop. And we'll keep you updated with what happens elsewhere as well. It's a very, very good start for Italy here. It certainly is. Get the hammer, get a pair in the first, steal the second, you're up 3 nothing. China won't want to let Italy get too far away. Need to build something here, get something on the scoreboard. They have the hammer. And they just let that previous end get away from them, didn't they? Yeah, Ferrazza did a nice job setting up the front stones and China was chasing for the rest of the end. Couldn't chase their way out in this stone and actually sliding onto the rings. No free guard zone protection for that rock. The Tornas can hit it. So 
early in this 10 end game, but the Italians certainly having the better of the play so far. Corner guard is cleared. Well, front stone, just biting the 12. Let's hop over to Switzerland and Korea. They're in the second end then there after a blanked first end. Chan Ming Kim. He's facing three. Korea trying to get back on the rails. Came yeah, they, out of the gate 3-0. and and They did. They started well in the, the last couple of games. Just He's had a lot of these to make. The Korean skip, and how's this one looking? Look at those reds. It's Ooh. Warm. Mark Fester comes out to sweep it through Ooh. the rings. And My Switzerland goodness. will take that. They'll take three, in fact. What a start for them. Kim Chang Min disappointed with that effort. I see all the games going on there. Andrea Peltzer being asked to clear a corner guard. Good percentage play here by the Italians. You've got a three-point lead. Keep it nice and tidy. Try to force your opponent into one. Xu Xing Tao. Placement there. Good corner guard location. Pelts are being asked to clear that corner guard. Perfect. Now it's a gear shift for Shota Xiao. No guards stacking up, so he's going to make a play on the stone in the rings, and now you start thinking blank. Yep, so that one goes as well. Both of them go. Spills off the rings. Empty house now. Almost Mosana, the fourth stone. Hold the target line for Joel Retornas. Beautiful day in Las Vegas. I can tell you the spectators are absolutely loving being here. And I think the players even enjoy walking to the arena in the sunshine. Get him involved in the action. Great setting for this World Championship. Hopefully we'll at least want to get China to play in the stone. It's a nice chance for Joel just to dial in draw weight. No risk. Just throw it in the rings and zero it in on the button. He threw it right there. Xiao Kiang. And again, no scoring ha hands is part of the strategy of curling sometimes. You don't get any scoring in an end. That's right. In curling, we call that a blank end, and sometimes it's a, it's a deliberate tactic. The basic strategy in curling, when you've got last rock, it's an advantage. And you want to score two or more points with that advantage. And when you don't have last rock, you're trying to prevent your opponent from scoring two. Score two with last rock. Get your opponent to score one without last rock. That's how you win curling games. But sometimes when you're trying to get your two and it's just not looking likely, and that's the situation here for China, you will deliberately try not to score. We call that a blank end. 
and then you keep Last Rock for the following end. And you don't necessarily go into each end thinking that. It just sometimes happens the way the stones are placed, the way they finish, and you realise there's not much on. So you try and make sure you keep the last stone advantage and don't score. Yes, yeah, so we're on a city lot like Las Vegas. Curling is very much a game of calculating and recalculating the odds on every single shot. You're reevaluating what your prospects are. And you're making your shot choices accordingly. So the players here, I know they're not going to be running to the gambling tables, but Listen. they'll be very, very familiar with the concept of risk and reward. And luck. And luck. <laughs> luck be a lady tonight. <laughs> Although we say in sport you make your own luck anyway as time goes on. Well, that's true. Curling coach of ours used to tell us it's amazing how lucky the well prepared are. Quite wise words. And Italy won't be unhappy that this end is blanked. It's another end gone. Yeah, from the Italian perspective, this is going exactly to plan. You get the two. The steal was a bonus. Now you're up three. Now you're trying to force China to take a single point. Or if you don't, make sure they don't score two. And that's exactly what's happening. positive about an end like this for both teams is once that decision is made to just really kind of keep it tidy and play for a blank. You can really save time on your time clock. Not too much thinking required in your shot choice. So after that mid-end gear shift for China, trying to set up the blank, now you have to execute it. Final shot to come as Amos Mosaner looks on. Shonisha, try to hit half the rock, roll out himself, blank the end. So this is the last stone of this end. We're looking for both to disappear. Don't Ooh. think so. And that's a mistake. That means they have been forced to take one. That was not the China plan. That means they lose the hammer for the next end. And it's now China one, Italy three after three.
So if you're initially fan, that's looking very good for you. First three ends going Italy's way. It's China taking a point they really didn't want to take. I know that for people that don't know curling too well, that's quite a bizarre it is. Um, concept. You, you score and you're not happy. <laughs> China's not happy because they've given last rock advantage back to the Italians. And now Italy can build something in this end. At least a two, maybe a three, who knows. But they have the chance to do that and... China did not want them to have that chance. That's exactly right. The Italians could come up with a pair here in the fourth end. That put them out to a 5-1 lead. That's not insurmountable, but it's pretty handy. Long way to go still. Don't want to leave this one short of the rings. Italian sweepers are really working it. They're squeezing as much out of it as they can, and they've got it in there. A great brush. That's it. On the small center. Full throttle on the brushing on that one. He's a strong player. Xiao Shulin. 87% for the tournament so far. Trying to get this in and round with cover. Maybe hiding a corner. Stone should still be visible for Italy. stick around but I think it might spill yes it does now a chance for China to use those guards stacked along the center line they can duck one around top four maybe they can start thinking force force right back would be good for them yep that would be the perfect response they shall Xing Tao 78 percent for the second Good looking weight. It's going to fractionally slide past the T line, goes into the back button area. And uh, Torna is saying, no thanks. We've got a two point lead, let's not mess around. Clear the center guard. It's looking live. Switzerland and Korea. Yellowstones belong to Korea. Korea hoping to bounce back here. No, so this no is, down. Looks like it's a potential draw for three. This could tie the game. That would be quite a turnaround. And we saw him miss that. Maybe, maybe even trying the double takeout for four. Let's see what he throws. Does look like a draw. No, well, waits up a bit. Going to try the double forward. Kim Chang-min, never afraid to gamble. He's uh -huh. come to the right city. Needs to curl a fraction more. There it is. Whoa. Double takeout for four. Korea, drop a three, snap a four. Wow. Korea goes up four to three. What a reaction from Team Korea. He, he allows <laughs> himself a smile there and mops his brow. I love this team. They like to gamble. They'll always look for the extra point. Well played. Sure was. China now with a little something going after that hit and rollout earlier in the end by the Italians. 
two Chinese stones stacked, one on the button, one just behind it, behind guard. 77% for the whole tournament. Italy missing the clear. Targeting these two red stones of China. Well, that helps the cause a bit. Love we'll to keep that on a biter if they can. Yes, it does. Just hangs on. Nice shot by Peltzer. Still a good chance for China after top of our screen, that long center guard. That's the trouble rock for the Italians. Tried to clear it, missed it. Xiao Kiang, 83% for the tournament. Just want to make life as troublesome for Italy as they possibly can, and they've already done so by getting that one on the button. How's this one looking? Do not want to tick this front stone. If they can get by, it's a beauty. Oh, it just does. Great brushing again from Team China, and that is a pistol. And just above the button as well. Great position. Xiao and Xu working hard on the brushing, and Xiao Chang, thanks, guys. Look at that. Wrapped completely around the guard, fully buried, front button. This long center guard has been troubling Italy the entire end. Starting to run out of stones now. We're down to thirds rocks. Eighty-five percent. Joel Returnas for the whole tournament. He could do the good one here, sure and a could. bit of a pickle. Those two reds sitting pretty for China. Things looking very good for Team China. Let's look in at Sweden and Norway. Yep, tight battle there. Oh my goodness, three red stones belong to Sweden. Stefan Wallstad of Norway, his last shot. He's gonna need the button or close to it. I think they're looking quite happy with this. Difficult one, though. Look at that. Look at all those reds. Great positioning, but lovely one there from Wolstead. Ties things up. 1-1. One, one. Fist bump. Nothing to it. Just draw the button. No problem. <laughs> nice shot. Up goes another guard for Italy. They're really trying to basically preserve what they have right in the center there. Yeah, China's built this end up very nicely. A couple of great come arounds, a couple of Italian misses, and all of a sudden, Italy from a position of control are all of a sudden in a situation where China could steal one, maybe two. Really difficult to get into that middle area, into that button area. These front stones are angled. If Joel can hit it just off nose, he could rattle everything around. And there oh, it is. Oh, yes. Oh, a great shot by Joel Retarnas. That could be an end saver for Italy. Well, not out of the woods yet, the Italians, but things are better than they were a minute ago. Just crosses the nose. Drives red onto yellow, onto red. Leaves China lying one, but importantly for Italy, now that forefoot area is a little more open for them. Yeah, a bit more accessible. No problem. <laughs> it's what I do. Nice shot, Joel. There we see a great look at it from the delivery end. Four foot area looking way more inviting for the Italians than it did a minute ago. Short shot. 82% for the tournament. Coming down the other side this time. Hit and roll in. How far is it going to go, though? 
Wanted the inside roll, didn't want that much of a roll, however. Had to catch the top stone a little thicker. Pops into the back of the eight foot. You can see from the brush positioning of the Italians, that's where they want to go. It's directly in front of the Chinese shot on the four foot circle. It's one of these ends where two great shots from your fourth stone thrower in this case. Turn what looked pretty ugly into all of a sudden you're scoring two. Key shot is this one. That's where he's headed. Xiao Qiang and Xiao Dejia can only look on as in the distance. Almost most on our 82% for the tournament. Throws the draw. It's looking a bit speedy, is it? It is. Tracked wide, and it's going to slide to the back of the forefoot. So it's very unlikely we're going to see a skip's deuce here. China now lying one, and decision for them. Easy choice. Just hit the Italian stone, but could also be tempted to throw a run around that guard where they're putting the brush. Risk there is if you throw it wide, leave it in the open. If you ever give Amos Mosan our chance to throw a double takeout, he'll have a go. Two again. Hands have turned around in this end. China will make a play on the stone just delivered by Mosana. A force would be a pretty good result for China. They'd love to steal, of course. You hit this one and roll away from the back of the forefoot circle. We're saying to Mo Center, you just missed a draw. Try it again. So here he goes. Go. Xiao and Xu really hammering this one on the brush. Are they by? No, they clip the top stone. Disaster. Thrown out. That is an ugly miss for Shota Sha. Still lying one, but that one will go now. And Italy are on for two here. Execution tolerance on this one is wide, not narrow. Just feathers the top stone, changes course, opening the door for Italy to score a potential two. Super worked so hard at that. We still have to convert. Still have to move that Chinese stone to get their pair. Only have to push it a couple of centimeters. It's just a gentle nudge, isn't it? But not easy. So again, back in Italy's favor. And then it's switched and switched and switched. Last stone and now the upshot is Italy have a chance for two. Well, looks like they're just going to play this as a Straight shot for one. This is nowhere near the guards. Italy will be content just to score. They've got their own stone for backing. No problem there. So it is a single point for the Italians. I'm quite surprised they didn't try and go for that. Me too. Just one for Italy, but a sigh of relief. They're still in control. After four ends of play, it's Italy four and China one.
we go. China 1, Italy 4 as we head into this fifth end of our featured game at the World Men's Curling Championship 2018. You're just joining us. We're in the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas in Nevada, the US of A. Great to be here. And great to have your company. Just approaching the midway point, just about in this game, and Italy just picking up one in that last end. And China would hope to get a couple back here, go into the break with a great chance of building on that in the next part of the game. So, important end for China here. Dead right, Allison. Put a deuce on the board. Psychologically, going to the midpoint. So we're one down, we're in this game. Up goes the guard for China. Razza. Trying to guard the stone in the forefoot. Don't think he's covered it completely. Chance for China to make a play. In that general direction. Good look at it from the throwing end. About a quarter of that rock is visible. It's not too much. Xiaoxilin, China's lead. He's got a real future. Nice young player. Oh, youngest player in the team. Just a year younger than Amos Mosenar. He's been around just a bit longer at the top level. Bites the front of the forefoot. Not a bad shot for China. They would have liked it in shot rock position, but handy place for them. They do have the hammer, don't forget, here in the fifth. So Retorna's lining up the corner guard to clear. What's our miss to clear in the previous end? Nearly gets them both. There's the PhD student. I'm sure there's lots of analysis goes on in this team. <laughs> no doubt about it. Lots of things to compute. Pretty animated at the back there. Shall you can see the disappointment. He's they really were close, weren't they? They sure were close. Were. It's just a missed line read. Just grazing that top four foot stone. Joel Return is saying, How much can you see? Just 
from the other tour. And I was just looking at the lanes. Yeah. Time while he's doing that, let's tell you what's been going on with Switzerland and Korea. High scoring game, 4 3, just in the fourth oh, end now. And lots bunches. of stones in play yet again. Yellowstone belongs to the Koreans in the back of the forefoot for Mark Pfister now, his final stone. Possible pair here for Pfister, but it's a delicate shot. Super shot. Yep, very nicely done. Double check that they pushed it far enough for the deuce. It's certainly a one. Will we come back to the confirmation of that score and we'll update you? At least a single point for Switzerland, maybe a pair. Big sigh there from Pfister. Of relief more than anything, I think. So, two yellows there. Sweden against Norway. Here's Nick. Nicholas Edin, fourth end. Trying against two. Very tight game, this one. Okay. Is he going to hit and stick? Yep, nose hit. For one, so just one, just a 2-1 lead there after four. Really close game between those two. Neither giving up too much. And Sweden leading the way in the rankings. What about Germany against Russia? Also pretty low scoring there, 1-1, one, one. fourth end. Alex Bauman. Yeah, awkward angle on this stone for Alex. He has to catch it really thin. Chance for a two, but you can see by his expression. He knows straight away, and it's all the way through, and that's the steal for Russia. Early days, but he'll be disappointed with that. 2-1 to Russia. Back to our game. Well, things have changed quite a bit since we focused here. Great raise double takeout by the Italians, and... All of a sudden, now it's an Italian stone in shot rock position, guarded by an Italian stone in the front. China with the hammer here in the fifth. Torn is sizing it up. The dilemma for the Italians, maybe the set up pretty good right now. If you play another stone down into that area where the stones are, you might set something up that's not there right now. Oh, the three point lead. Is it a clear of the center stone? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Joel's still shaking his head. Real push with the delivery, and this one is floating wide, and that's why he picks off his own stone. You could tell by the body language as he was lining that up. He was just not convinced of the call, and it reflected in the way he threw it. Goes by the center guard, clips his own. That's hard to do. You couldn't have done that really if you tried almost, if that was the intention. Maybe just a bit of miscommunication as well. I think so. One of those situations where they might have taken a few more seconds and just made really sure what they were wanting to play. Now the pendulum has swung at least three times in this end, and now it's back to China. Great chance here if they can freeze on front of that Italian stone. Yeah, that's a pretty good, start, pretty good shot. Yep, shot stone there. And the Italians racing to that front stone to run back. You can go to the well a little bit too often sometimes on these run backs. Again, just a clear this time. Do they get enough action to squirt that stone out of the rings? No, it hangs on. Look out, Italy. Here comes China. 
going Italy's way at all in this end. Yeah, Joel Notorn is not happy, and that's why. China lying two. Well, they're well apart, these two, aren't they? Yeah, that's a long and pretty awkward double. Shot at Jiaxing. Just protect our shot, Rock. Good chance for that deuce that we really want. I think this is a pretty smart play. Attempt in this situation with those stones spread apart so far. I think, oh, well, let's think about three. Let's try and draw one out there to the wing and gamble for a three, and then all of a sudden somebody makes a crazy triple takeout, and you're kicking yourself. In that situation, do you look at who you're playing? Well, that can be a factor as well in this Chinese team. They'll have studied their opponents throughout the tournament, and they'll know that Almost most honor can throw heat seeking missiles for takeouts. So they'll be wanting to make him draw as much as they can versus hitting. Italy playing the scoreboard a bit here. Going to hit the back stone, second shot. Basically saying to China. You can have two points. I'm not going to give you three. Wow. <laughs> it virtually it vaporizes the Chinese stone. Yeah, I wouldn't want it to be on the end of that. No. <laughs> you stop it. No, you stop it. I'm not stopping it. Still a terrific chance for China to score two or more. Two to come for China. Shona is going to try to freeze the stone right on top of the one just delivered by Mosaner. If he can do that, three is on. And the sweepers will have to do their stuff here. Sweepers are in charge of the distance. Xiao pointing upwards. He thinks it's a little heavy. And it is. It's sliding by the target stone. And will it slide through the rings completely? Just hangs on. And which one's counting there? Exactly. On the That's the question. They're taking a look at it. It's going to be close. I think it might be the red. I think it may have just hung on. I think you're right, Allison. Shushing <laughs> down. That was such an opportunity there. Oh, don't know. It's close. It's close. Boy, oh boy, you'd measure it if it was going against you. Yeah. Oh, Mosinara thinks it's the red. He does. Maybe I think it's the red as well now. Well, and it's actually gone, if it is second shot, into a really awkward place for the Italians. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need too. <laughs> Please, let us zoom right in on those stones. Where are they? Well, I wouldn't want to pick it right now, but almost Mosinara gave us an idea. He thinks... You've got to think that it's in, I guess, if you're Italy, do you? Yeah, and the awkwardness now, it's almost uh, its almost like a come around. It's actually hidden a corner behind that yellow stone. So if Mosana chases it, clips his own stone, open draw for three. Yep, this is tricky. Sure is. There you see it. Yep, that's a very difficult position. Important stone, though. Limit. Well, no mistake there from Mosaner, but it will be a draw for two. Exactly what China wanted yep. going into the fifth end break, yep. and Mosaner disappointed. He knows 
Italy may have left their let their opponents right back in the game. But you know, at one point it was looking like three, so <laughs> maybe true. maybe they're thinking, well, it wasn't three. Could always be worse. Still have to make this one, but it's a very makeable shot. Just needs a full 12 foot. So last stone of the fifth for Zhao Deja of China. He will rely on his sweepers here just to guide this one in. Yeah, Xiao and Zhu don't seem too concerned. No doubt. There we go. So China do get two. They close the gap. It's a very close game, this one now. They head into the break. The chance to chat to the coaches, have some refreshments, some water. It's China three, Italy four after the first five ends. First end of play. Great opportunity here for Amos Mosa of Italy. Open hit to score two. Nice control weight. It's a little bit on the high side, but the quiet weight saves it. Two points for Italy. Lead it 2 nothing after one. Second end. Stones around the edge of the 12 foot. Shadasha, China. Nose hit, stuffs it. A steal of one for Italy. After two, Italy three, China no score. Fourth end, all the stones behind the T line. Thomas Mozaner electing the conservative play, content just to score a single point. Uses his own stone for backing. One point for Italy, giving them a four to one lead after four. The fifth then China roaring right back. Draw for two. Shaudisha, no mistake. Easily into the full eight foot, biting the four foot. China right back in the game. Italy four, China three, after five. Yep, Sweden against Norway. Last stone. Tight game, low scoring game. Stefan Wallstead lining it up. 2-1 to Sweden. Here he goes with this last stone. These teams near the top of the table and oh. <laughs> <laughs> lands well and stays in, sticks around for one. For Norway, 2-2, two, two. Yep. So heading close. into the break. So close to the guard. Uh, Are we updating our other session 11 matches? Switzerland with a 5-4 lead over Korea at the fifth end break. Our feature match, Italy leading China 4-3. Sweden and Norway are deadlocked 2, and Germany holds a narrow 3-2 lead over Russia here at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Oh, 
title. Here we are looking at the team stats at the midpoint, Allison. Yeah, just that one stolen point by Italy. And they had that great lead. And China fought themselves back into it. Although Italy's still ahead on all levels. The hardware on sheet B. That's what they're after. That's the launch pad, the hack as it's known in curling. And that's the scoreboard so far. That two from China putting a very different look on this game. A narrow one point lead for Italy. That changes the complexion of the game markedly. Psychologically now for the Italians, you feel like you've let the opponent back into it a little bit. He's got some good numbers, keeping up his percentages for this game and for the tournament. So this is the sixth end of our feature game at the 361 World Men's Curling Championship 2018. We're in the New Orleans Arena, and that's in Las Vegas. Nevada, USA. Uh, Alison Walker and Hans Franlow bringing you live commentary on the game between these two, China and Italy. And both teams in need of wins to make their way up the rankings. Top six, remember, qualify to the next stage. Good stats from the lead player of Italy. Nelly Ferrazza trying to go around the center guard, but how many times do we see this after the fifth end break, Allison? Heavy with the draw attempt. Is it going to hang around at all? It does. Sliding all the way to the back of the 12 foot, but leaves the four foot area available for China to use. They've got the center guard. The reason I say, how many times do we see it after the sixth end? The fifth end break, the ice technicians come onto the ice and they run a mop up and down the ice. Has the effect of adding just a fraction of extra pace onto the ice. And so many times we see it. First draw shots of the sixth end sliding heavy. China will have noted that. They'll keep this one in front of the T-line if they can. And yeah, that one's slightly heavy too. And that's going to pop out the other side. Italy with the hammer in this end, remember. They'll be looking to bounce back here with a two of their own. I'm sure that's what Soren Gron would have been reminding them about at the fifth end break. So guys, I would have said to you before the game, you're one up at the break with last rock. Would you be okay with that? And the answer to that would certainly be yes. Go out, play your game, get your pair, you get back in control of the game. Even if you're scoring, you're still two up. So. Yeah, scoring in this even end as well, and keeping control of the hammer in the even ends. Also very important. Xiao Jing Tao, not having as good a game as he normally does. 75% tonight. Just on the nose. Everything behind the T-line. So if it, even if Italy does get a good inside roll, it will be behind the T-line, so China could draw down to it. He 
He's having a good game, way above how he's played so far. Italy might be happy just to hit this one on the nose and stay away from the corner guard, or center guard, rather. We'll take a live look in at Korea and Switzerland. A game where they're scoring in bunches, and there's three Swiss stones in the forefoot facing Kim Chang Min. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Stuffs it. It looks like a steal of two for Switzerland. So that will give them a 7-4 to four lead. Good lead for them heading into the break. Oh boy, they may run out of scoreboard on that one. They're just <laughs> scoring in bunches in that game. We're in the sixth end here of our featured game. Just a couple of stones in the house. Andrea Pilzer targeting. This red one on the right. Italy content to keep the stone on the wings. I think that's a smart play. With that stone creeping further and further forward, if China can nail the inside roll, They'll be front button. That'd be a great spot. Zhou Qiang also playing well, 85%. Yeah, I refer to Zhou. I think every team has an energy player, and Zhou Qiang for me, for this Chinese team. Yeah, he's got a, a spark, hasn't he? He does. Is there a roll? No, it's a hit and stick. So that's still working its way forward in the house. Now it's front eight foot. Started behind the T-line. Nose hits going further and further forward. So now it's Italy. You can start thinking about inside roll if you're brave. If you can get one in behind that center guard, you'd be lying two. One buried. Joel Tornas. Lowest tournament average. 75% tonight. 84% for the tournament. A couple of misses early on. Oh, and again, a mistake for a Tornus. Oh, they've both gone. Ah, he says. Absolutely. Now the control swings back to China. Free shot at going around the center guard. China trying to force Italy to a single point. Now you can start thinking steel. That is an excellent center guard. Xiao <laughs> Chang trying to turn up the pressure a little bit on Italy. Watching intently. Here's it coming around now. They're going to sweep it deeper than they'd like because they want to get a little bit of cover. Yeah, so you can still see it at the other end. So, good weight, just a little offline. Important shot here for the confidence of Joel Retornis. After that miss on the previous shot, you really do want to come back strong with your next one. Coming around a bit now. He's going to roll out. Thin. Tough night continuing for Joel. Just pushing it out of the rings. So again, China, another chance to go around the center guards. Something not quite right tonight for Joel Rotornis. Not as sharp as he normally is. Excellent player. 
他那个是分不基本没打残。Needs to remind himself, take go around, take a look at the scoreboard. We're leading this game. Keep your head in the game, keep it in the present. On to the next shot. He's not having a great game though. Ujazi, 68%. A little bit below his average as well. Another great opportunity though for China to get the force. They've had that center guard up. Had one shot at trying to get around it on the previous stone, didn't bury it. Another attempt here. Again, the stone just tracking, not finishing. It's almost exactly the same, isn't it? Exactly. It's like a clone of the previous shot. So Italy have another chance at that one. He's smiling. <laughs> He's smiling. You threw it there, I threw it there. I thought it would move more. Yours is exactly the same as mine. <laughs> exactly right. You're yeah. meant to be the skip. Well, sometimes you see a rock and you see, you see the evidence in front of you, but you can't quite believe it. And on that one, I think Zhao just thought, okay, Zhao Kangstone didn't curl quite enough, but I think it's going to move there. But he threw it down the exact same path, and his didn't move either. Let's see what Amos can do with his one here. Same line. They're close. Shaving the guard. Very nice shot by Mosana. No real chance of an inside roll on that one, but good full contact to leave the Italians lying one. Make trying to make a play at it. Italy would not mind blanking this end at all. It's been a bit of a scrappy one for them. Blank would give them a chance to reset and try it all again in the seventh. Oh, the one-point lead, that's a good strategy. Short roll here for China, though. They only need to roll two rocks to the right. Just be control-type wait for Xiao Risha. Looking to control the roll. This is such a great view. See how effective the brushing is by this really strong Chinese pair sweeping. And there is that two rock inside roll. Great shot. Might have just, just snuck yep. a peek out the, the outturn side. side. Yep. Super effort, though, from the China skip. There you see the brush being held by Joel Retornis. Amos Mosana can see a corner. And if Amos can see a corner, he can throw the heat and just throw it dead straight. Just try to pick it out like a peel. Almost an art moving to just clear things away here with his last stone of this sixth end. Down the other side of the center line. Oh, oh it's passed. Hits. And away they both go. So it turns out. In Italy's favour in the end, blank the end. Not much happening for them there. Better not to score. China three, Italy four after six.
fans from all over the world here watching the action. Sweden, Canada, USA. Got some Vikings in the house. Turkey okay. fans in general can watch four games for the price of one. I yeah, don't know that I've seen a Viking ship on the Las Vegas Strip. That wouldn't surprise me if there was, was, was one somewhere. There's oh, there will be. Just about everything else. But the Eiffel Tower. The New York skyline. You've got Venetian canals. <laughs> everything you can imagine here. Hot air balloons. Exactly right. It's someplace. Sure it is. It's almost serene inside here compared to the madness outside. <laughs> oh, you have to embrace the madness, Alison. <laughs> we get explosions of action inside here, which are just as riveting. Seventh end. Yeah, it was a pretty scrappy sixth for the Italians, and so they'll be relieved that they had the chance to blank. See so if they can get something going here in the seventh. This one is tracking deep. Definitely a little less curl here tonight than in earlier draws. Teams are really being fooled on come arounds. It'll often happen as the tournament progresses. Stones wear in a little bit and lose a little bit of the bite that they have at the very beginning of the week. Under a Policy change in the World Curling Federation in agreement with the players and the coaches and the ice technicians. The ice technicians can, they call it treating the rocks, using very, very fine grade sandpaper to apply to the running edge of the stone on the ice and it promotes a little bit more curl. They don't do that by surprise. They will do that fully in consultation with the athletes and the coaches. The idea though is to promote a consistent amount of curl right throughout the tournament as opposed to treating the rocks really aggressively at the beginning and getting huge curl and then at the end of the week wearing off. Wearing yeah. off. Yeah, rather have it consistent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's good thinking in terms of producing the top quality, consistent top quality action, which is what we want. Just a couple of good guards there from China. Yeah, Italy trying to cover of their own two italian stones in the rings but sitting in the open so china can double them off if they want to target brush right on top of the stone that's pretty much where they want to hit it Shushing Tao, going to try the double takeout. <laughs> Hard, whoa! <laughs> Stuffs it. You know, there's two opinions on the line call. There's the guy in the house holding the brush, and there's the guy throwing the rock, and that was a case there of sudden and violent disagreement. <laughs> Let's take a look in at Germany-Russia. Germany holding a 3-2 to two lead in this one. Yellowstone belongs to Russia, so Alexei Timofeyev with a draw for two here. Put them in the lead. This Russian team looking quite a lot more relaxed. It was the same Russian foursome with one different player that played last year at the World Men's in Edmonton where they went winless, but they're looking much more comfortable here in Las yep. Vegas. We've got a couple there. Two point lead, two point end rather. Russia leading it four to three. Yeah, see a few more smiles out of Russia than we do normally. Look at this pile of stones, <laughs> Sweden, Norway. That's Nicholas Edin here with the final stone. What a battle this game is turning out to be. Really take it to each other, aren't they? They're really every end. They seem quite relaxed about this, so, well, no, they're not. 
Well, not now. Is it going to get past this guard? No, it comes up short and would have curled onto the Norwegian stone. Sweden with a 3-2 to two lead over Norway. Is the Italian bench looking on him? Does that mean he's unhappy on the right, or yeah, is he just Marco, analyzing? Yeah, just shaking his head. Come on, boys. We can do it. Two very good red China stones there, right on the center line. Delicate play here for Andrea Pilzer. Let's navigate that center stone. Maybe get to the inside of the Chinese rock at the back of the forefoot. They're by the top stone. No inside roll, but he does bump his own away, and that's actually better for the Italians. Yep, spacing them out. Italy lying three. And Marco suffered a bit of an injury this week, Allison. He's got a bit of a sore knee, so. That might be it. Yeah, maybe, maybe sitting down, maybe, maybe stiffening up a bit as well. <laughs> Just to get up and move about. Shao Kang. He loved the inside roll himself. Oh, might get one here from the angle we're seeing. There we go, it's a little one. Great look at it. Even another three quarters of a rock on the inside roll, you can see two-thirds of that stone from the shooting end. So let's see if the Italians can another one in there, and there's Mosander saying outside roll's just fine. He's exactly right. Inside roll's great. Outside roll's fine. As long as you stay in the rings and as long as you remove the Chinese rock. Joel Retarnas. Struggled a bit tonight. Important shot for him here. He was just a bit off here yeah, with his final, his two stones in the last end, wasn't he? So those are gone, though. How's this looking? Mosana now looking for the outside roll. Good line call. And again, well spread out. Yep. Good sensible thinking there by the Italian team. When you're thinking inside rolls, we see the Chinese bench in the background. Always know what your options are, and if it's a little bit full and the outside roll's an acceptable option, make that choice quickly. Just don't leave it on the nose and leave them a short roll again. Xiao and Zhu hammering this with the brushes, trying to hold the line straight. Just catch it thin. Did they push it out of the rings just? Near disaster for China. They knew it was close. They knew it was just quite what they wanted. Tried to fix it. Xiao Chang. A little narrow with that one. Two red stones in front of the rings belong to China. Center guards, the Italian stones, the yellow stones in the rings. Joel Return is going to try to duck around the center guards. Line three. Italy, yeah. After a blank in the sixth end with that small miss by the Chinese, can they punish the mistake? Sweepers again backing right off of this one. Stay off it, says Amos. Miles by the guard. Now they're going to sweep it deep. They want to avoid setting up a double takeout. 
Well, Italy lies three, but again. That wasn't what they wanted there, no. Hans, was it? Well, that was eight feet heavy. Yeah, and that was an opportunity there. Getting come around top of the button. By sliding behind the tee line, you give the Chinese the chance to draw in front of it and get into that four-foot area behind cover, neither of which is good for Italy. Another opportunity this time for China. The ice being tightened up now. It's inside the edge of that eight-foot circle. To draw to the front four-foot area behind cover. Chance for the China skip here to make life difficult for Italy. Italy with the hammer. Shonija draws all the way to the back, but he does leave a little bit of separation. Tapped off, bounced off there. Let's head over to that high-scoring game between Switzerland and Korea. 7-4. And look at all those stones there. Hans. My goodness, we've got four yellow Korean stones. We've got the Swiss stone corner frozen. So Kim chang Men, riverboat gambler, trying again. Get a number here. Let's pass this guard, OK. How many? How any? Oh, Springs it. the red. Oh, great shot. Korea scores three. <laughs> so what a response from Korea there. Lucky sevens. Two by Switzerland in the previous end. Three this time by Korea. And we have a tie game at 7-7. Seven, seven. Man, oh, man. No defense in this one. <laughs> Scoring in bunches. Takes two to tango. Lots of rocks in play. That's going to be a fun finish. Close, very close game. I'm running out of ends. We're in the seventh year on a narrow 4 3 lead for Italy. Just want to get this one in and around that red one. Let's cover top of the button. Smart play there by the Italians. Choosing the outturn side. Having real trouble burying on the intern side. Over to Germany, Russia now. Germany 3, Russia 4. This is the seventh end as well. And Alex Bauman was someone missing a draw on the previous end. Yeah, big chance here. Draw for two. Put them right back in the lead. Sweepers are just dusting it. Just one win, Germany, so far. They could do with another one. And it comes. He uses his own stone for backing. No problem there. Two points for Alex Bauman and the Germans, and they go out to a 5-4 to four lead. That one's back and forth. Yeah, all well, the big games very close inside the arena tonight. Four games going on. This is the one we're focusing on. Huge shot here for Helge Ja. Oh. Italy has the hammer. They've got one three quarters buried behind cover. They make a big mistake with this one. The Italians might have a shot for a bundle. Oh, how far is it rolling? How far is it rolling? Rolls out of the rings and now, Amos Mosaner, do you make a play on that backstone or are you content just to score two? Do they, do they need to two risk it? Two points puts you up six to three, and that's a really nice place to be. Three points. If you played the backstone, played the pick. Seven. But more risky. More risky, absolutely. This is the straightforward play. And you know, in that earlier end, we saw him play that conservative shot where he might have gone for two, and he only went for the one. Yes. So, seventh end, last stone. My feel is certainly the two. Pretty good looking stone here. There it goes. 
Well played to Italy. Given that opportunity after the China miss. And headed out. They have a three shot lead. China three, Italy six after seven. We go 6 3 in our feature game between China and Italy inside the Orleans Arena here at the 361 World Men's Curling Championship 2018 in Las Vegas in Nevada, the USA. Italy get us back underway. This is end number eight. Three shot lead for Italy. Good position to be in yeah. at this big, stage. Big deuce for them, sort of, Allison. But you're right. That deuce in the seventh after dropping a pair in the fifth. Really important for the Italians to get themselves back into a measure of control. But China now with the last stone in the even ends. Down three. But if they can get their pair here, force Italy to one, and then get a pair in the tenth, they could force an extra end. Teams managed a three yet. I just have to have a look at the Swiss and the Koreans are hogging all the threes tonight. <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the game is pretty low scoring compared to that. Corner guard. So China on three wins and three losses so far. And Italy one win. Pretty even head to head between the leads, Xiao and Farasa. Mid 80s. Yeah, huge game for China. If they could get to four and three with a win here tonight, right in the playoff picture. And Italy on a single win, but knowing that seven and five probably gets you in the playoffs. And you get a win tonight, and you move to two and four. And you're a long way from the top six, but very much more alive than you would be if you're one and five. And you can sneak in the back door. Well, they've been playing well. We saw the Italians yesterday against Canada. Really had the best of the play of that game. And coming up just short, the Canadians pulling that one out. So the Italians have got game. It's just not reflected in their win-loss record this week. That happens sometimes in tournaments. You're playing great and you just... Curling cliche, you're on the wrong side of the inch, and it's just not happening for you. It's happened to a few of these teams, but at this level, more teams are getting closer than ever before. And it's what you said at the start, Hans, it's seeing out these games, getting yourself into the position, yes, but actually seeing them out. Oh, they're having to sweep this one hard. Need a piece of the rings. Once again, great Chinese brushing, huh? This team, a lot of fantastic sweepers here this week at the top level of men's international curling. This Chinese force and really use their sweepers more than any other team. To 
Bill Retorn is lining up a clear of the corner guard, Andrea Pilzer. Straight back double clear, leaves the corner guard, but gets rid of the Chinese shot. Nice shot. Over to Sweden, Norway, this really close game between these two great rivals. 3-2, seventh end. Stefan Olsted with the last stone here, live. One, Norway, or one Swedish stone, rather, buried behind a corner guard, so Wallstedt needs to draw a piece of the forefoot. Nedrogotten and Vaberg backing off. Now they're taking a move on it. Just to make sure of this one here. Not many opportunities for more than that in this game. Does secure the point. There we go. 3-3 three, three now. Half to seven. Teams just trading ones. Interesting choice here. It's a bit of a teaser, the Chinese stone at the back of the eight foot. At least half open, but after a bit of discussion, the guys are saying, well, corner guard? Don't want to leave the corner guard there. Look at Andrea Pilsner's numbers there. Yeah, big Super edge. stuff from him. Yeah, big edge over Zhu Dao tonight. There is Andrea Pilsner. See about half of it. This is one of these shots where either or is good. You want to hit the stone in the rings if you're going to miss anywhere. Clip the corner guard. He does clip the corner guard. Shifts it over a little bit. In curling parlance, we would call that a pro miss. If you're going to miss it, miss it on the inside so you get the guard out of the way. Good throw. It could be termed a kind of a tick shot as well. <laughs> exactly. That was a big, a big weight tick shot there by Pilsner. Shift, shifted it, didn't remove it. Well, China's going to try and use it. Actually, just going to set a guard of their own. Protecting the stone in the back of the rings. Good line. Yeah, may have just over curled again. We can just see see a little bit more of it this time. I would say maybe two thirds. So in this situation, by being able to see more of the target rock mentally, you're focused much more on that as your primary objective. That's a better release from Joel. Well by the guard, though. Again, just glancing that Chinese stone, picks it out of the rings. Yeah, we see one or two like that from him. And I wonder if Joel's got a, I wouldn't say a bad stone, but uncharacteristically wayward tonight. A lot of his stones tracking wide, not finishing, and maybe he's got one stone that's just not moving as much as he's expecting. Comparison there for you of the thirds. And then we see Xiao Han with a clear edge of Virgil Retornas tonight. At the third stones. China trailing by three, but they've got last rock here in eight. Trying to set up for a deuce by coming around the corner. Most center joins in the sweep. You're allowed to sweep your opponent's stone once it reaches the T line, not before. That one comes very nicely buried. Italian stone is shot rock, but the Chinese stone undercover. Might be a situation now where they're forced to draw down to it. They don't really want to do that. Look. 
Again, the situation where you're looking at the scoreboard and you're playing the scoreboard as much as your opponent. You're looking at the scoreboard saying we're three up. For heaven's sakes, we can't drop a three. Two. We don't want that, but. It's manageable. Yeah. But three is dangerous. Three is bad. <laughs> Joel is pinballing things all over the show tonight. Catches that one thin. Stuffs onto his own. Let's get rid of one red. Let's head over to Switzerland, Korea again. That <laughs> big scoring game. Not quite as many stones in play in this end. Yeah, end number seven. Right up the center line, though. So, Mark Fister. His last stone. Stone at the back of the forefoot. He's just going to hit that one, I think, that yellow Korean stone. Knock it out of position for mm -hmm. one. Yeah, nice shot. Nicely played. Good judgment there from Vista. 8 7. Yellow here belonging to Italy, red belonging to China. China with the hammer. Xiaoqiang. I'd like him to replace the guard and defend the stone in the back of the eight foot. Zhu and Xiao on the brushes. Pretty good guard there. Has he left to play on the outturn side? He's looking at that. There's Xu and Xiao catching their breath after yet another big time sweep. And we can see there's about half the stone po poking out on the outturn side. Not totally necessary for the Italians to stick around as long as they remove the Chinese shot. You get your force, or uh, worst case. China blanks, and then China has last rock on the odd ends, and you don't mind that. And here's Mosanar. It's a, quite a narrow port here. Threw it okay. Hits no and stays hit. around. Very nice. Two yellows in there for Italy, well apart. Let's meantime hop over to Germany against Russia, 5-4. This one's been back and forth all night, and it's about to go back and forth again. Russia lying two. Chance for Alexei Tsimov, you have to draw for three. This could be a bit of a, an end changer here. And they can make this coming down the right-hand side. Three. Germany guards in the middle there, safely negotiating those, pass those in towards the forefoot. Oh, oh very nice. That is a really good draw from the Russian skip. Oh, what a difference that could make at this stage in the game. Yeah, three points huge. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> He's going to get past this Yellowstone here. He is. Comparison of the force, if you like. 68%, 89 for Mossener. Yeah, Mossener with a so he's clear almost Compensated on balance for Nortunas, uh, maybe. That's true. To make it a, a more even game, if you like. Yeah. Chinese have left their stone in a very interesting place. Most under wanted to play the angle run to try and slash it out of there, but there's a risk of a jam on the back stone. They go too thin and over the top of it. Catch it too thick, you blow it right by, and China's going to draw for two. 
hit half the rock, hit the inside of the redstone, push it out the side door, and that's what they're looking at. Not an easy shot. There Germany, we are Russia game. Look at Seven in, five. In fact, a three point end for the Russians. Big shot here for Amos Mosoner. Huge weight. Not laying a brush to it yet. No contact at all. Big miss there for the Italians, and now a chance for China. Yeah, Draw up, for two. It yeah, looks up to the sky there in despair. Throw well, massive weight at that one, Allison. When you throw it that hard, it's not going to move at all. It's the fact it's going to back up. And that was as straight as anything. Ah, he says. So China now. This is a real turnaround. Get your pair here. One down, playing nine. You're right in this game. The last stone of the eighth. Bonjour, déjà. This is a real opportunity here. One would have been good, but this is really good for China. If they can get two here, get right back into this. Xu and Xiaopi seem pretty happy with the weight. And that's why. Look at this. Perfect. Yep, nicely done from Team China and Zhudeja. Two red stones counting, two points for China. This is not over yet by any means. China five, Italy six after eight. This is the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. And this is the 361 World Men's Curling Championship 2018. And that's the scoring so far in our feature game between China and Italy. Well, it's very much game on here. Italy with an 6-5 lead. And it has a very different look to it, 6-5 compared to 6-4, <laughs> doesn't it, Hans, if you're Italy? Absolutely does. And China starting the proceedings with a long center guard. That's hard to do, and it's a very good shot. Gives you a chance to stack two guards if you're inclined. Yeah, that makes it a little close for comfort for the Italians. They do have the hammer here in the ninth. Being one up with the hammer in the ninth, you do have some options. You can press a little bit harder for your two-point end, knowing that if it goes wrong and you drop a steal of a single point, you're still tied up with Last Rock playing the 10th, so I expect the Italians to go pretty aggressively to try and get control back by scoring a pair. 
See going around the center guard. As opposed to trying to tick it. Two skips, same age. Tuna has been around a bit longer in terms of his curling experience. Xiao Xilin. A little surprised here that after throwing that long center guard that China's like to come into the rings as opposed to stack another center guard, but probably thinking that Italian stone so far forward in the rings is acting like that second guard already, so might as well throw one in there. Farazza, Italian lead preparing to throw. Now you can see the journey of the stone, all oh, 45 meters or so of it, all the way down to the house. And now you can see it beginning to curl. Hard line, says Joel Retarnas. Wanting to push it as deep as they can, pushing it into the back of the eight foot. A little above that back, another two rock widths or so to be the line two, but nice shot there by Ferrazza. You get the feeling, Allison, this is going to be one of those ends where stones are just going to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. They're going to bunch up here, I think. Shushing down with a pretty good looking stone here. And he's trying to <laughs> wave, wave it, it over, wave it over. <laughs> Does that work, Hans? Well, <laughs> some people try to use mind control, some people wave their hands. Not sure that any of it works, but it makes you feel good. You feel as if you're making a difference. <laughs> It's sticking out, well sticking out. Yeah, just popped a little bit in the open. Delicate shot though, we've seen these stones, you up the weight a little bit, just a fraction and it tracks. Andrea Pilzer aware of that, throwing that one very delicately. Gonna have to go really hard to get by the top stone. It's okay, I think, just just tapping the red one. It's not gonna go out, though. <laughs> Pretty nice shot, though, by Filter. Shooter uh, left in a good position. Yeah, pops a little bit out on the intern side, but Hindley down line two. Nice delicate weight there by Pilzer. Have a look at the replay. Tight to the guard, actually over curls fractionally. Would have loved it to pop right on the center line, just poking its nose a little bit out on the intern side, leaving the button available for Xu Xingtao. Just one past, yep, safely past. Get it pushed over and over and over. Well, comes up short. Italians, I think, are still lying too, but that Chinese stone is in a very dangerous place for Italy. <laughs> Joel looking back as he moves to the front of the in play area. Wants to get rid of the center guard. Built, sir. This isn't a heavyweight tick again, is it? Yeah, that's right. Don't want no sound at all, but I don't know about this one. Oh, it is another tick. <laughs> Maybe that's how Andrea rolls. It's out the way at any rate, so. Well, he's a PhD in computer <laughs> science. Maybe just calculating. You get more life in the stones if you don't hit them quite so hard. <laughs> no 
Stones, Stones bunched up there though. Down the center line. Yeah. Yeah, interesting decision now for China. They're gonna talk about it. China are aware that dropping a two in this situation is near fatal. Forcing a one, they're still in the game. Still, they're really in the game. We're also aware that the stone that they put in the forefoot is in a very dangerous place. So they want to leave it there as long as they possibly can and then make a play on it at the very last. Puts the guard back. Oh, it's not Sweden, Norway again. That intriguing game between these two. 3-3, three, three, eighth end. And it's Sweden. The last stone here, Nicholas Edin. Double run attempt, I think. Center guard straight back on his own stone to pick off the Norwegian stone on the edge of the button. Tough, tough shot. There's a lot of trouble heading his way, I think. It is a steal of one for Norway. Finally... A little crack in the armor of Nicholas Adin. That's the first time we've seen that. 4 3 to Norway after eight. Italy clear the front stone. So China again showing patience. That red stone belonged to China in the front of the forefoot. That's the one that's going to be worrying it to Italy right now. Timeout being called by China. The yellow stones belong to the Italians. Coach Marcel Rock making his way down to the playing surface. He's been with Team China for what, three, four years now. Helping with their, and with their program. Yeah, it's made a real difference. And there's the situation they'll be discussing. The umpire chasing Marcel Rock <laughs> there. They're Time to go, Marcel. Only allowed a minute, and obviously there's a complication with translation there. 
bit difficult to hear Marcel, but I did hear him say freeze tap. I think he believes that it can't wait too long to use that stone in the front of the forefoot. Push it forward now. Corner freeze it on the stone on the button. This is the ninth end. It's a one point game. So here it goes. Important shot for China here to make. Italy's next shot is troublesome as possible. Xiao Xu, maximum effort with the brushes. They're kind of trying to come right around the pile, and it's going to come up short. Adding to the worry for the Italians, though, yeah, the Chinese stones is thing threatening in front of them. It's not the worst outcome, is it? But still, could be problematic. Let's hop over to sheet A again. Yes. And look at this one. The number one gambler in Las Vegas this week is Kim Is that Chang. one, one, two, potentially, if they can get rid of that other red. Let's see what yes. happens. Yes. He's watching, yes. he's watching. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> two reds gone and that, is that three, four? It's four. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Korea doesn't know how to score twos. They only know how to score threes and fours. Unbelievable. 11-8. <laughs> you need to get eight as well for Switzerland. <laughs> the game's not over yet. <laughs> First one to 50 wins. <laughs> oh, yeah, what a scoreboard that is. And still, still potential for more. <laughs> still two ends to play. They got 19 points on the board. The 6-5. Our feature here. game, China, Italy. Yeah, big decision here for the Italians. They're lying, we believe too. China red, Italy yellow. Mm. Lots of rocks in play, and there are still five rocks to come in this end. Three for the Italians, two for the Chinese. Xiao De Xiao looks on. Joel Torres. Lining up a run on his own stone at the front of the house. Right decision. Well, we're going to know in about 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's right if it works. Well, that's not bad. Leave yourself lying three. A little bit of cover. Importantly, he moved that stone off the front of the forefoot. That was the one that was going to be a real problem for the Italians. Red, straight back, killing that red one. That was the key one to remove, and he also picks a stone off of the back. That's a nice shot by Joel Retornis. Yep, gets a good angle in that red, and off it goes. China still with something to work with here. Lots of rocks in play, but things looking a little less sketchy for the Italians right now. Italy leading six to five. They've got the hammer here in the ninth. The two point end would be huge for them right now. If China could limit them to one, that would be a result for them. At this point, absolutely. Here he goes. Joue déjà. 
Good looking line. It's all about the weight. It's going to be a top. Yeah, just a fraction heavy. He was looking for a freeze, and he just bounces the Italian stone to the back of the forefoot. Pretty good shot. Red stone at the back, or yellow stone at the back of the forefoot, set up to jam the stone on the back of the eight foot if they hit the Italian, hit the Chinese stone rather, in the front of the button. Go three quarters on the high side of that one, just on the right hand side of the red stone. It's okay if you clip your own at the back of the forefoot because it's just going to jam on the stone behind it. What you can't do is nose hit it. It's almost on her. This on an attempt the previous end, just being a little bit wide. Let's see if he can make the adjustment here. Not too much room to work with there. Well, it really, it's centimeters again. In fact, probably a centimeter. Let's see the line. This one has to curl. Straight back jam. Straight onto that red, wasn't it? Had to cross the face of it. Just again, a fraction wide. Now China lies one locked in at the back of the button. It's not a disaster for the Italians if the Chinese steal a point in this end. They'll still have Last Rock tied in the 10th in that situation, but I can tell you they would much rather be thinking about scoring two. That seems a lot less likely now. Still. Going over it there, almost messing up. Didn't really have much room to work with. Needed to get across the nose, and but he also knew if he clips the guard on the front of the rings, it's really bad. So, regardless, China now in a situation where it's possible steal. So I stood here for Joe Deja. Just trying to protect the shot, Rock. Well, I'm not sure. The most honor. Look at lining it up. Thanks. I hammer this redstone on an angle and catch a piece of that red one. Maybe it can spring. Squirt it between the two stones as opposed to straight back by changing the angle. And Joel's looking at it as well. Well, that's the decision. One thing we know about Amos Mosander, he can throw it hard. And uh, he'll have to to dislodge that Chinese stone. Not too much risk here, as I said. If you drop the steel, not the end of the world, so. Worthwhile, you might get two this way. Last end, ninth. Here we go. Oh, oh. fantastic <laughs> shot! Italy Look scores five! What an outcome for Italy and Amos Mosnar. Look at that and shot. And that ends the game! game. Over. What a final shot. Holy we didn't quite moly. expect that one. Wow. No wonder the happy and the bench shakes hands as well. Super final shot. <laughs> Take that one any day. That's victory for Italy in style at the end. Watch this. Pokes it right through the hole. Italy scores five. Worth one more look. I thought they were just going to have to struggle to squirt it and score two, but he picks it right through the hole. Brilliant. Watch the reaction from Mo Sonner. Yes! That's the one. The arena still buzzing about that one. What a brilliant final stone. There's the final score, that huge five-point end, clinching victory for Italy, 11-5 to five winners over China.
said, yeah. Just had that much to hit it. No problem. Well, Italy throws 11 on the board. Korea has scored 11. Let's move over and have a look at Korea versus Switzerland. Nose hit there. Kim Chang Min. Switzerland has the hammer here in the ninth end. Mark Fister taking a close look. Not quite sure who's shot. Changes shot selection. Korea playing the yellow stones and Switzerland playing the red stones. Eight foot says Fister, so he thinks he's already lying one. He thinks this is a draw for two. Two points would bring the Swiss within one. Not laying a brush to it yet. Needs some contact. Here it comes. Nice shot. Two points for Switzerland. What a game this is. Both teams now in double digits. Switzerland scores too. It's 11 to 10. Underway in the 10th, then you're enjoying extended coverage here from the evening draw Tuesday night in Las Vegas at the 361 World Men's Curling Championship. Look at this high scoring affair. Korea 11, Switzerland 10. Korea with last rock here on the 10th end. And will it be the final end? Well, we have extra ends. We need more points. Leaky Bok. Lead for Korea. Trying a tick shot. If the stone hits the bumper, it will come all the way back, but it will not. That is an excellent shot by Lee Kibok. Perfect tick. You can bump your opponent's stone, but you cannot move it completely out of play. Great shot. Simon Kempler. Lead player for Switzerland. Also holds the brush for Mark Pfister on Skip Rocks. 
I'll set another guard. Switzerland has to steal a point to force an extra end. Key box. Less weight on this one. Doesn't want to leave extra guards. He will tick the stone. But he leaves the guards in a corner guard position. Opens up the outturn side, but not quite as good as his first tick. Just down the weight a little bit. Let's see. Indicating downward with his hand. So something to work with here for Switzerland. Rafael Merkley. Looking to duck around the guard. Nice to the back of the forefoot. Kim Changman, as we look at Mark Pfister. Free guard zone, part of the end is over, so Kim Min Chan is being asked to rip the corner guard. Good shot. Now Switzerland will have a chance to throw a better guard on that stone in the back of the forefoot. By better guard, I mean nearer to the center line. Good shot guarding the inside of the shot rock. And Chen will again try to yep. remove that guard. Nice shot there. Good end from Kim Min Chen, the Korean second. Redstone belongs to Switzerland. Korea with last rock here in the 10th end. Enrico Fister having a very nice game here tonight for Switzerland. Switzerland doing a nice job setting the guards and Korea trying to do an equally nice job clearing them. Yep. Seong Se Hyun. <laughs> Just catches it. With that kind of weight, that's all you need to do. A little moment of anxiety in the voice of Seong Se Hyung. No problem. Enrico Fister. You know, Hans, it's a shame there can't be a draw in curling, isn't there? No Cause kidding. These teams have performed so well and made some amazing shots. And they certainly have. But someone is going to win this. And it's going to be so sore for the other team. Another nice clear by the Koreans. And clearly, it's advantage Korea. It is, but that Swiss stone. Switzerland has played this end perfectly. They've set every guard. Korea's met every challenge, however. Two ticks. But Switzerland's going to have a chance. Mark Pfister. 
Probably throw one more guard and then maybe on his last one think about throwing it half into the forefoot and make uh, Kim Chang Min think about losing the game. Eighty percent for his draws. Oh, another very good guard. Well, Korea's going to call time out. Ling Myung Sup, Korean coach, making his way down to the ice surface. <laughs> Not really sure what the decision is. He ripped the guard all day. You just want a chance to draw breath. <laughs> Maybe. And just. And also, time might also be a factor. We're not quite sure what the Korean time clock is, but that could be the situation. They're just preserving some time. That's the right call. Chase the one in the rings, you throw it a couple of feet heavy. You let Fister go around it again, and all of a sudden you're drawing against two guarded. You might lose the game. This way you're going to have a shot at something in the rings on your last one. Maybe a different story if the game is tied, but when you're one up, clear the guard every time. 82% for the hits. He's had 11 off them. Kim Chung Min. He's had some very difficult shots to make, so that was always going to be fairly straightforward for him. Very nice clear. So, decision time. Switzerland, where do you put it? I think you certainly put it in the rings and you make Korea think about losing if they miss completely. Looks like they're going to just leave it in the front 12 foot guarding the shot rock. There's the Swiss bench. They're going to ask the question of Korea. As I said, it might be slightly higher risk, but might be tempted to throw it in the front of the forefoot. Kim Cheng Min looking on, try to cut down the scoring area for the Koreans, but. Looks like he's going to be happy enough to guard the shot rock by throwing it on the front 12-foot circle and saying to Kim Chen Min, try a double takeout or try a draw. And we've seen misses with last stones Certainly in this have. championship so far, so... What a game. <laughs> as the tension builds, what a game Switzerland have had as well. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Twos, threes, and fours falling like rain in the desert. No, no single points for Korea at all. It's either zero or four or three. They want a piece of the rings. They're going to get it. Nice shot by Fister. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Now it's the decision for Korea. Draw or a hit. If you hit, you know you're getting an extra end, but Kim Chang Min, he's going to play the draw. Needs full four foot. Needs full 12 foot to guarantee an extra end, but. He certainly doesn't want an extra end. He wants to win the game right here. It's full forefoot. Fester and Gimminger, they've done all they can. Switzerland played a perfect 10th end. 
Yeah, I don't think they'll beat themselves up too much after this game. They've done everything they can do. So last stone of this 10th, this is it. I like the line. Switzerland in with two. It's the one closest to the button that matters. Look for some help on the sweep. Now they think it's light. Oh, no, they burn the stone! Disaster. Oh, my goodness. And it's frozen in time almost. They can hardly believe it. Lee Kibok lost his footing, burned the running slipped. stone. And, and they can only stand frozen in time almost. <laughs> now. Well, the decision in the hands of the non-offending team. Standing there, not moving. What happens here? This is such a difficult situation for the Swiss because they are the non-offending team. They have options about what they can do in this situation. They, they can, you know, and quite within their rights to win the game or take it to an extra end. Yeah, it's up to the Swiss. Switzerland are going to claim the two points. Oh, what a disappointing and tragic ending to this game for it, Korea. The Burnstone. Really it really is, and the bench can hardly believe it. They can't. They know the Swiss were the, quite within their rights to take the game, but terribly unfortunate there for Korea. Switzerland win the game 12-11. And an unbelievable finish to an unbelievable game. Let's, well. Let's watch on the replay. The stone was light. I think it was almost certainly going to struggle to be shot, and Nisi Leaky Buck loses his footing. It certainly would have been second shot. <laughs> certainly appears so. Just look at the feet slipping here. It's the third sweeper coming in. Nudges him. Down he goes. Very, very unfortunate. Seong Se Hyung came in to join the sweep. There you can see he knows. His foot clipped the foot of his teammates, sent him to the ice, burned the stone. And the offending team has no say. It's up to the opposition team. Brilliant game for both teams, and I guess. From a curling point of view, Switzerland played a very impressive game too. Well, they certainly did. And that one was certainly heading for an extra end at the very worst for Switzerland. They played a terrific 10th end. Looked like they were going to force an extra end, but due to some bad fortune, come off with the win. Right, well, from one dramatic game to another, look at this one. 4-3, Norway over Sweden, 10th end. Stefan Wallstad of Norway. Two Swedish stones in shot position. So this is a game oh, shot right here. Oh, terrific shot. Terrific shot. Leave Norway lying too, but now Nicholas Adin, does he have a double takeout for the win? The red Swedish stone to the left of our picture is in third shot position. Question for Dean: how much of that stone can he see? He's going to have to hit it a little bit high side. There's a great look. He's going to have to squeak the guard to make the double takeout and stay. Well, if you're Nicholas Adin, it's very, um, very doable. And you put your money on this man making this kind of shot. Olympic silver medalist, last stone of this 10th end. Norway counting two at the moment.
does not curl enough at gems. Norway steals and wins the game. Well. First loss of the tournament for Sweden. Who would have thought that, but Norway were right in this game, right from the start. Kept on their tails. They have beaten Sweden 5-3 in this round, Robin. Well. This tournament is now wide open. That has put the cat amongst the pigeons. So that one's finished, and this one has two between Germany and Russia. And it's a victory, 8-6 for Russia over Germany. Close game all the way through. But what? that three in the eighth end really helping Russia to that 8-6 score there. <laughs> what drama tonight here in Las Vegas, Alison, amazing. Every game had just something special about it, really did. Seventh end action. Almost Mosaner, final stone. Eases it into the back of the four foot circle to score two. Italy looking like they're in control at this point with a six to three lead. China roaring right back. Shodesha. Just needs the eight foot to score two. Puts it right in the four foot. China right back in the game, trailing at six to five. Then in the ninth end, almost Mo Sonner throwing huge weight, trying to run in onto the Chinese stone, picks it through a hole for a miraculous five. Yes, indeed, Amos Mosaner. Winning shot there, victory for Italy, 11 to five over China. Well, yes, it has been quite a session. Switzerland 12, Korea 11. It was China five, Italy 11. As we've just seen, Sweden beaten by Norway, 5-3, their first defeat, and Germany six, Russia eight. And there are the standings now. Norway right on top with Sweden 6 and 1, Canada and Scotland 5 on 1, Russia 4 and 2, whole host of teams on three wins and then a couple of twos. Wins for everyone now. So getting really tight in the middle of that table. Juxtapositioning for those top six positions. Well, congratulations on, on that victory. It was hard fought, but what a shot to what a shot at the end to win it. Thank you very much. We definitely needed a, a win today because uh, it's been a while since we won our last game, and um, yeah, we needed to to have two two wins after this round, and uh, we're happy for the win. China stuck with you though, didn't they? Yeah, you know, we had a very good start. Uh, first of all, LSD was great from from us. We we took the hammer and then. Uh, in the first three ends, we were just perfect, so we didn't let them breathe. And some downs then, they, they, they tried to, to come back in the game, but we, I think we controlled it on the scoreboard, and that's why we won. You've had some sore ones here, close-run close games and, you know, just losing out. Bouncing back now? Yeah, you know, we're at the World Championship, so, of course, close games. And uh, it, it's not always easy to, to lose uh, close games, but you have to accept it and try to be better for next ones. And plan from now on? Plan from now on is to win as much as we can and we know we can perform and we showed it today. So we, we have some, some uh, games that uh, you know, 
we, we think we, we can win and uh, that's what we're going to do in the next days and try to perform as, as good as we can in order to win them. Well done today, well done. Thank you very much. And that was Joel Returnas, the skip of Team Italy after their victory over China. And that's it from us for the moment in this session seven. It's been a fabulous session of action. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hans Fernlop and me, Alison Walker, certainly have. We'll see you for the next one. Bye for now. That's what you don't need. Show no less.